Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. To begin, let's recognize God's presence in each other by welcoming those around us. With full heart and full voice, let's begin our celebration by singing together number 311 as we gather at your table, number 311. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we pause. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send us out to proclaim your love to all the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us on our journey with your presence in the Eucharist. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice, who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through my proclamation might be completed and they all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humble, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was preparing and reflecting on these readings in the gospel for the 30th Sunday in ordinary time, a word came to my mind in the word humility. Humility. I think I sh know that there could be more humility in the world. I have a little story to tell you. My wife Mary and I were at an ordination of a servile priest, and the one was her cousin. But anyway, at the end, just before the final blessing, the bishop said to the young men, now that you are priests, he said, but I want you to remember one thing always be humble. 
Humility is a great virtue. And how well do I know as a bishop what humility is? When I go home, my mother says, Bishop or no bishop, you still take out the garbage. <laughs> so there you are, the power of mothers. And in that first reading from Zirach, he declares that the Lord is a just God. He shows no partiality to anyone. Everyone is treated the same. And he's especially attentive to widows and orphans. And Zurich assures us that the Lord hears our prayers. That is the way should we be living in the way of the Lord, too. He tells us that our prayers go up to heaven, piercing through the crowd, clouds, and they find, keep moving till finally they reach their destination. And if God answers our prayers, we need to accept what he gives us. This is not a Burger King deal or not, or have it your way but God's way. And we think sometimes we pray for something that is really important to us, but it doesn't happen. But in the long run, God always knows what we need the most. And, but all in all, we need to be always persistent in our prayers, not giving up. Look at some of the saints that prayed for years and years. So I think we can do the same. And as we read and hear the words of St. Paul, he invites us as baptized people to evaluate our lives. Would be, we be ready to meet the Lord if we were called any time? He tells us of his experiences, of his life experiences, of how he almost was killed several times. He was stoned, left for dead. He was shipwrecked and on and on. But did he give up and say, boy, I ain't going on anymore. I'm giving up. No, he kept the faith. He kept right on going. And yet, through all of it, he was humble enough to accept and give God praise for testing him. So we, too, need to be humble and accept. And yet, I hope and pray that I am as strong as Paul is in the years ahead. Paul is telling us this because he knows he is coming to the end of his life. And we also, too, especially when you get my age, that you need to be aware of that, you know, if the Lord turns that page and your name is on it, as one father told me, that's, that's the day. But we need to be ready every day. In our gospel, Luke tells us, and he addresses this parable to the people who are self-righteous and enjoy looking down on everyone else. And he goes on to say, two men go up to the temple to pray. One is a religious leader, a Pharisee. And Pharisees at that time were people that they looked up to, and the other a tax collector whom people dislike because of the way that he overcharged people. And these tax collectors were part of taxing people for the Roman Empire. And this Pharisee positions himself in the front and begins to pray almost to himself. Now, the front does not mean anything that sitting up front is any difference here. We can always come closer to the front to be closer to the table of the Lord 
And he goes on and gives thanks that he's not a sinner, that he does all these things that he thinks is right, the fasting, the almsgiving, but yet, is he really praying to God or is he just thinking of himself, what a great person I am? And now, in the opposite part of the temple is this tax collector. He is standing there, not saying a word, his head bowed very low. And finally, he begins to murmur a few words, and he says, Lord, be merciful to me, for I have sinned. And he's aware of his past and of wants to make amends to God for the wrongs that he has done. True humility. And I, this can take place in our lives too, when we sin and we distance ourselves from God. Yet somehow we become aware of our conscience is nagging us that we have done wrong. And where do we go? We have this beautiful sacrament of reconciliation that we can turn our life around and be in ba back in God's favor. Again, we humble, to be humble. It's not always easy sometimes, but yet true humility will bring us to the, the sacrament of reconciliation to recognize our faults. We have a merciful God, so we should not be afraid. And I would like to end with this little prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Word, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you with confidence this morning as we hear the words of your Son, Jesus. Help us always to be attentive to him and put into action what we hear. Grant us this, O Lord, in the favors we ask. In Jesus' name. For Archbishop Lucas and the leadership of the Archdiocese of Omaha, in their efforts to further the kingdom of God in new ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout our nation during this time of turmoil and division, we pray to the Lord. For people throughout the world who are suffering from extreme heat, flooding, fires, storms, and other natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially for Christy Avery, Karen Blazer, Loretta Chicor, 
Mary Jarecki, Charlie Jasper, Rita Murphy, Mike Schrant, Father Bob Schumann, Marilyn Motley, John Weber, Bob Saliva, and Jim Tubbs, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this past week, Mary Ann Thompson, Kathy Clausen, Lois Kuda, for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may respond generously to the Archbishop annual appeal as faithful stewards of the gifts God has entrusted to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dale LeBlends, LeBenz, Chris Bayer, Tim Cumberland, Jeff Hall, Joe Madden, Evan Trufaults, Mike Weeder, who are attending a Christian's Encounter weekend in Norfolk, that they may experience the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Let us now pray for the living and deceased of the Birkham family for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us now pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. As the gifts in the table are being prepared, please join in singing number 396, Drawn to You, number 396. Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, in the offerings we make in your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he restored eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Number 938. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right, it gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, St. Isidore, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, and the entire people whom you have gathered before you. In your mercy, gather us all together. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their time in their life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you can through all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the old hymn who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
as a community, we come to receive the Lord. As we come forward, please sing number 312 here at this table. Number 312.
May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We extend our deepest sympathy to uh, Anne Jen Albrock, whose sister Marianne Thompson died this past week. The funeral for Marianne will be here on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Visitation in church from 5 to 7 p.m. Tuesday. Also, we've received word that Kathy Clausen of her parish has passed away, uh, funeral arrangements for her pending. And this morning I received word that Louis Bud Kuda died. Um, we extend our deepest sympathy to his wife Rose and her children. Funeral arrangements are pending. Eternal rest granted to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. October is the month of the rosary. Tomorrow afternoon at, from 2 to 3 p.m. here in church, we'll have the rosary in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and a time to pray uh, for healing throughout the nation with the election coming up for more vocations of the priesthood, etc. Many and many reasons to come and pray before the Lord, asking for his special blessings. St. Anthony's Parish isn't having a bazaar this year, but they are serving uh, poly sausage and sauerkraut, and pulled pork sandwiches and, and, and meals like that throughout the afternoon. You might want to drop by and have lunch over there. Um, it's good to be back and be seen. I have a long way to go before I'm really back. And at least once in a while I can appear. I thank you for all your prayers and I've been receiving many of them. Also, thanks for all the cards I received the last week or two. Uh, what was it, honoring Pastor's Day? I um, really don't like to have those special days because you people show your respect for your priest in such a wonderful way every day and always that we certainly don't need a special day. But Thank you all for your many words, your cards, your kind works, and most of all for your wonderful spirit of cooperation and good example. Uh, we are called as followers of Jesus to be inspiration to one another. And so often, every day, I'm inspired by the goodness of so many good people in Columbus. I hope in some small way I can inspire you likewise. We're on our journey together, helping each other on our way through life to the glory of God's kingdom in heaven. So thank you all, and uh, thank you for your prayers, and um, pray for all who are healing in any way. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go forth singing number 561. 10,000 Reasons, number 561.
Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 